Good morning. It's Thursday, April 25th, 2024. It is a nice sunny day out there. The wind's picked up a bit. They are talking about rain Friday through Sunday, possibility of storms. So do keep an eye on the weather. We do need the rain and we'll be grateful for it. Murtis Reimer is home from hospital and for that we give thanks. Pat Bowden and Lynn Eady are still in hospital and we ask that you continue to pray for them that they might recover quickly. Worship services this coming Sunday. First Lutheran will worship at 8.30 and St. Paul at 10.30. Both services, of course, will be live streamed on the parish Facebook page, First and St. Paul Lutheran Churches. Those are the announcements I'm going to touch on for today. Uh, today is the feast day of St. Mark. St. Mark was the earliest of the Gospel writers. His Gospel was written somewhere between 55 and 70 AD. It is the shortest of the Gospels. In his Gospel, the word disciple does not appear. Mark, as far as we know, was not a follower of Jesus in person. It is believed that he was a companion of St. Paul and St. Barnabas and learned about Jesus from them. And it is also according to tradition that St. Peter was able to teach Mark about the life and ministry of Jesus. Mark's Gospel does not have a birth narrative. It simply begins with Jesus beginning his public ministry. And one of the words that appears quite frequently in Mark's Gospel is the word immediately. Things happen in Mark's Gospel at a breakneck pace. Mark's Gospel ends at verse 8 of chapter 16 with the disciples having discovered the resurrection, and that's it. Later addition to that, puts the disciples putting out the message of the good news, but most scholars agree that the gospel ends at verse 8. And the later edition is someone who wanted to make sure it had a better wrap-up at the end. Mark is an example of faith for us in that he followed the Lord. He was willing to proclaim the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Although we don't know a great deal about him, we do know that many of the other things that we witness in the Gospels of Luke and Matthew have their resource in Mark. And so those three Gospels together are what we call the synoptic Gospels. That is to say, those Gospels are written with the same vision, or as the word means, literally with the same eye. Yes, and the Gospel of John was written much later with a much different slant on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. As with all saints, we recognize and honor them on their day. We give thanks for their witness and for the work that they have done in making Christ known. They, like us, have been given the responsibility of proclaiming the good news, and so we carry on their work today in our own way. We read the Gospel of Mark, we proclaim from it, and we give thanks for it. And hopefully it inspires us to go out and to do the same kind of work and ministry that St. Mark did, as well as the other early apostles. We give God thanks for the gift of St. Mark and all of the early witnesses to Christ, and ask that we would be allowed to continue that witness. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks for Mark, his witness of his gospel, and for the word he brought into the world. Help us to continue proclaiming that good news that Jesus indeed is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, and that salvation has come through the world through him, and there is no other name by which we must be saved. Help us, we pray, to be good servants of the word in the world today. We ask for timely rains so that the crops that are being planted will root and grow. We pray, too, for those who are in hospital and sick and those who are home recovering. We ask your presence for those who still continue to grieve and mourn comfort and console them all. We thank you, Father, for hearing us pray today. We've asked it all in your name. Amen. Well, I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow. I hope you have a very good rest of the day, and until then, goodbye now.